Welcome back everyone, Ken with Burger Motorsports. The long awaited episode five of the M340i race car build. Pimes in the back working on some stuff right now. Pause, we got a train. We finally have our Burger Motorsports Bulla Aluminum Race intake manifold ready to get put on the Gen 2. This is for Gen 2s only. We do have Gen 1 intake manifolds already that's available for purchase on our website. Today is just going to be our Bulla Aluminum Race intake manifold for the Gen 2 B58. On top of our billet manifold being talked about and released today in this video, we're going to be going over our all new sequential firing port injection system called CanPort. Terry Burger is going to be in today to discuss more about it. Until then, let's head to the back right now and go see what Pine's working on. What is up guys, Pi, I'm from BMS. We are back for episode five. Canon discussed earlier what we're gonna be doing in this episode, cam port sequential PI controller system. But for now, let's go over our new billet race intake manifold systems. This is for the Gen 2 B58. Comes with port mass, standard port injection, full billet. This core is good for 2000 base horsepower. Now coming over to our new F-Series billet intake manifold. This one is good for 1500 horsepower. Has methanol and PI ports as well. Got extra NPT ports off the water side so you can get some tamp or pressure if you wanted to off the side. On this car right now, we're gonna be installing the race intercooler intake manifold system. We're gonna be putting some 750cc injectors. We're gonna be swapping it from the PI spacer onto this. And at the same time, we're gonna be installing the cam port PI controller. Terry will be discussing that in a little bit. Hi bitches, we just got the spacer installed. Actually, it's called the lift plate, and the reason for that is to bring this big gigantic thing up so it can clear the alternator for active hybrid systems, the 2023, 20, 24, and up. The alternator is about two times the size of this. A regular port injection spacer will not work. It hits this. So anybody that wants to do port injection on a Gen 2 with the active hybrid will need to basically go with an intake manifold setup like this one. So Pine isn't able to get the oil filter back into its housing. I'm gonna run it over to Chris from CM Builds and uh, see what he can do with it. Freaking ice cream truck is out here. Shit, need some ice cream for real. Shout out to Chris from CM Builds for always helping us out. Clean 67. All right, well, Chris just finished up the RS3's rear sway bar and springs. He'll lower it down here in a second and we'll check this thing out. I'm stoked to have this thing lowered now. Shout out to Eurocode for sending us the rear and front sway bars. It means a lot to us. This car is so much lower now. It is so much lower. Yikes. All right, so it needs some BMS spacers on it bad. Climb needs some help. Oil filter housing needs to go back in. Take it back over to BMS now and get it back on the M340. Just rewired the JB4 system. I removed the old PI controller. We're gonna be installing the new cam port controller once Terry speaks about it. All right, I got the coolant pressure system routed out. Gonna wire it up to the JB4 system. Once we do that, we'll make sure all the scaling and everything works properly in the sensor. We're pretty much done after that. While Pyam is uploading the new firmware on the car, we've got Terry Berger himself to go over our all new cam port system. Hey guys, Terry. how's it going? Got a little preview of the prototype of our new uh, cam port controller, otherwise known as the reflex killer. There's a few significant changes. I'm just gonna go over a few of them right now. I'll do a full write up on our site later about it. But one of the biggest changes, of course, is something you guys have been asking for for a long time, which is sequential control. Finally! So each fuel injector is controlled independently and we also monitor current on each fuel injector control, which allows us to do a lot of advanced safety systems. Like if one injector isn't working, we can safely shut the whole system down. Um, can control up to eight injectors. Obviously, we're only using six here. Another big change with this is the uh, CAN bus integration. Now, on the average BMW, you've got you know, maybe 15 different computers. They all communicate via CAN bus. The ECU, the TCU, the factory fuel controller, the, uh, even the radio system and the seats are all communicating via CAN bus. And of course, if you're running a JB4, that's also sitting out there on CAN bus communicating with everything. By adding CAN bus to the port injection controller, we're able to do a lot more now. If you're running a JB4, we can send a lot more data back and forth between the two of them, which is really nice but it also opens up a couple other nice options. Um, one of those is this can be operated as a standalone. So if you don't have a JB4 and you don't want to integrate it with your flash, you just want to control this as a standalone, like an AIC6 or something. We've got a USB connection on the back here. You can plug that in. We'll have a laptop interface. 
where you can go through and set up the fuel tables based on a variety of criteria. The other big thing we can do with this, which is really nice, is that it can integrate in with flash only tuning. So if you're not running a JV4, you're just running a flash, like say MHD, MHD can actually request the port injection control to the controller, pass back a lot of the advanced data on injectors and other stuff I'll go over in a second that's on the harness to get that direct one-to-one -one integration, which is really slick setup. And I'll be working with MHD on, on enabling that. Now the first car we plan to release this for is gonna be the B58 and uh, S58. They're gonna use the same wiring harness. I'll just kind of briefly go over this a little bit. We've got the individual injector controls. One through six. Those are pretty straightforward. This one's the cam sensor control. This is what we're gonna to use to time sequential injection. And something we've done that's a bit unique is that you'll notice we don't have a crank position input on this. There is one on the board, but we don't need it for this harness. Come up with a really cool way to do the sequential timing right off the cam sensor. And what that means is it's super easy to install. You just plug that in and you're good to go. Other systems, they have to dig into the ECU, posi tap shit, hope the posi tap doesn't pull out because your whole engine could go if the thing comes loose, etc. So this is a really novel and innovative way to do it. Working on the harness, we have the uh, flex fuel sensor input, full FML sensor control. Plug it right in, it'll read the sensor, pass that data back out via CAN bus to either your JB4 or to your flash tune. This one is for fuel pressure. This is really important, low fuel pressure. With port injection, you have low fuel pressure pushing fuel in, you have boost resisting that. And the difference between those two is called injection pressure. And it's important for the, the system to know what the injection pressure is because you have to time how much you open the injector based off of what the pressure is. So by having low fuel pressure integrated into the system and native, that can all be taken care of for you. There's no guesswork. If fuel pressure drops, port injection goes up automatically. It's super slick way to do it. Moving along here. Oh yeah, so we've got we've got lots of extra inputs and outputs. This one, we haven't attached anything yet. Um, this is a, a low fuel pressure trigger. Steve at Fuel has got some really cool B58 low pressure setups he's working on right now. I know we plan to put those on this car, I think in the next video. And then when we do that, this may or may not be involved in that. This guy right here, is the transmission connector. And what we're doing with this is we're getting power and ground, and then this will also have CAN bus running through it. So rather than having the posi tap again, the ECU or whatever for your CAN bus, it'll be all right in one ready to go connector. And the cool thing about this is this whole harness can be on and off the car like in five or 10 minutes, super easy. One more thing I wanted to go over real quick, and that is this is a prototype. So the production harness will be way nicer. It'll have nice sleeving and stuff like you see on the JB4s, you know, this kind of stuff all throughout it. You won't be able to see this connector here. We'll have one of the JB4 aluminum all-weather enclosures that the whole assembly goes into. So it'll be all weatherproof and, and really nice looking. But for now, because we're just testing it out, this is how we have it set up. I think that's all I wanted to cover here. We'll have Pi and pop this thing in and we'll see if it actually works. Got this thing up and running. We're tapped into the CAN bus here. I'll twist my laptop around so you can kind of get a little look at what I'm looking at. Um, I've got the address ED, which right now is the receipt address from the controller. This is the transmit address, FO. So I'm seeing the data coming in from the controller. I'm seeing the controller responding back, in this case to the JB4. So everything looks good there. Um, right now we have it set for 10 hertz, but of course, you know, uh, we'll probably run it like a 20 or 30 hertz. We just left it like this when we were doing the testing. So we'll crank that up. It can go as fast as we want. And then if you look at the JB4 app here, you can see we have our ethanol mixture, which is coming now off of the CAN bus through to the JB4. And of course, that low fuel pressure. Next thing we need to do on this thing is get the low pressure situation resolved because that's been holding the car back. Once that's on, we'll get it back on the dyno and see what it can do. Now that Terry has gone over everything that he needs to, we're gonna take the car out, go get a couple logs. We'll see how it goes from, from here. Till next time, Terry will probably dial in the car as far as the can port goes on the dyno. We've got our RS3, three, three and a quarter inch to five inch for the five inch intake. <laughs> I was just gonna say. That's what she said. Another thing Terry forgot to mention about the Campor ECA is that it has two EGT inputs. So if anybody that does feel like running EGT, let's say per bank on a twin scroll engine, they could run per bank EGT through the Campor and get it through the CAN data into their logs. We got the Campor installed along with the EGTs. Everything is working. Augs one through six is the EGT as you can see. They go up as soon as we hit the gas. We got low pressure fuel. We got the E85 content, that's if port injection is working, and that's our coolant pressure. We added all these external systems within the JB4 so we could read all the data that we need when pushing this car hard. Also, this is our new beta interface that you guys will be able to change on the new firmware. We're doing a slow release, a few thousand at a time, so sit tight to get this new release. Once you get it, you'll be able to change interface and change all the themes and add all the widgets. You guys have asked and we have listened. We're gonna be installing a Pure 900 Turbo that's sitting right next to me on our 2024 M340i. It has a locked ECU from factory. We'll be putting our Gen 2 race intake manifold on it along with JB4 and our port injection kit. 
Let's see how far we can take it. Next episode, we're gonna be putting it back on the dyno so we can show you guys the EGT data, the coolant pressure data, and the IAT data on the intake manifold. Let's see if we can turn it up a little more and maybe make 900 wheels. Don't ever call me a side. You know what I want, girl, I'm trying to make you mine.